I am here at a different location with a different piano with a different type of video. As you can see, I'm not in the recording studio. Today I am, instead, I am instead at my parents' house with this piano, which is my Baldwin SF10. Longtime followers of the channel might remember this piano. If you don't, this was my practice piano from when I was 12 to maybe for several years, maybe around when I was 17 or 18. And then I got a couple of different pianos and I retired this one to my parents' house. I still love it though, which is why I have kept it. And I'm here with a different type of video for you guys as well. I'm actually going to be doing my first product review because a lady named Amy from the company New Vending actually sent me a couple of products and I'm going to be doing an honest review of them. Now I get a lot of of people who send me requests to review apps, to review products, to come work for their company, to do all kinds of goofy things, but a lot of them truly are goofy. And while I would like to review apps in the future, and while I would like to review more piano related products, a lot of them are just simply too goofy and too weird uh, that I wouldn't really want to associate myself with them. And another thing is that sometimes people will come along and say, oh, hey, I'll give you a commission if you you know, sell this product for me. And no, I'm not going to be doing that. But what makes this product different and what makes the person behind this product different is that she actually contacted me through my website and said that she wanted to send me a couple of products and that I would be doing an honest review of them. That's what she wanted me to do, an honest review. And so it's clear to me that she's watched my channel, she knows what this channel is all about. And so therefore I am here today with a couple of really neat products sent to me by Amy from New Vending and I'm going to be reviewing them for you today. So the first one, as you can see, is this piano lamp. Now, I absolutely love this thing. You can buy it for around 40-ish dollars on Amazon. I think it's around $43.70 at the moment, and it's pretty dang sweet. So there's a few really cool features about it. One of them is that it's actually pretty high quality. It features a lot of aluminum um, construction. And I'll show you the, the whole thing in a minute and how I have it mounted behind the, um, the music desk and everything. And I'll also go try it out on some other instruments too. But I really, really love it. It's got this really cool, like, adjustable light here as well so if you have a you know you can change the way it works that actually lights it up better than the way I had it before I was trying to get it to be a little bit more spread out and even but actually this was a little bit more even than the way I had it so it's got the adjustable light which is really cool and there's also three different color temperatures on it as well so you can have the nice golden glow here and there's a couple of other ones as well and it's a very nice slim construction very modern looking very cool looking very, it's pretty lightweight. It can also fold up because this thing here will tilt down like this and you can tilt it up like that. And so it will fold up into a really nice compact package for storage, for traveling. And it's just really cool. I really love it. Before today, I really didn't use all p piano lamps all that much. I just kind of went without them and used the ambient light in the room. But now I think I might start using this piano lamp more because I think it's really cool. So then it also has a, it has a micro USB port in the back which powers it. And right now I'm powering it through this power bank, which is another item that Amy sent me. This is also, I believe, manufactured or sold by the same company. The brand name on this is Kusa, and it's a 20,100 milliamp hour power bank. This one here, I think, is around 30 something dollars, and it comes with this really nice uh, USB cable that has three different connections at the back. One is micro USB, one is lightning uh, port for your um, you know, iOS devices, and the other one is a USB type C. So you can charge basically anything with it, and uh, it's pretty dang sweet, and I like that one as well. So you can charge this one up through a wall outlet, because you can use this same cable to charge it as well as to discharge it, which is kind of cool. So you can use that cable to charge it and discharge it, and then this one here it uses a micro USB cable to receive power. You can either use it through a battery bank like this, or you can use a wall adapter and plug it directly into the wall. So those are kind of all of the basic specs about it. So now I figured I'm going to show you how I have it working on this piano because there are a couple of, there is one small flaw with it, which I will talk about in a little bit. But first I do want to show you behind this piano to show you how the music desk is designed and why this piano lamp works perfect for this piano, which is why I started off the video on this instrument. So one thing you do have to be concerned about with this particular music stand is whether or not your music desk will be compatible with it. As you can see here, it has a very nice round flat base. 
um, that is used, of course, to support the light. But the only downside to this is that it, you need to have a good platform for this particular light to sit on. As you can see here with my Baldwin, there's this wonderful, huge, flat platform behind the music desk. It's really wonderful. I love the design of this music desk as a, as a whole. And this is one thing that I never really thought of before, but this is one thing that makes it even better. Uh, it's got this huge platform in the back that makes this light super stable and it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, if you if you do lower the uh, thing, it will push the light back a little bit, but just don't do that when the light's there and it's not a problem. However, um, so that is one thing you do have to keep and keep a lookout for when you are looking at a music lamp. Is it going to be compatible with your piano? Now I'm going to go test it out on a couple of other pianos and show you why it doesn't work quite as well on some other instruments. So that is the only flaw that I found with this light is that the big platform, while it does an excellent job of keeping it secure on a flat surface, if there's not a flat surface behind the piano, it becomes a little tricky to use the light. So one really great thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that not only is this music lamp pretty affordably priced when you look at, especially when you look at other ones on Amazon, if $43 sounds like a little pricey, go look at some of the other ones on Amazon. There's some on there that are like $200 for this little tiny looking thing. I can't imagine it would work very well. So $43, especially for the quality and the amount of light this thing puts out is pretty affordable. But not only that, there is a discount coupon code down in the description of this video that will save you 10% on this item. It has free shipping and it's actually really affordable and I genuinely, genuinely like it. So that is my honest opinion. I genuinely like it. Now I will go show you guys a few different things about it and try it out on some other instruments in a minute, but I did want to mention that as well. And frankly, I love this power bank as well. Uh, it's really, really great because this isn't the only thing you can power with it as well. Of course, you've got two USB outputs so you can charge up your phone, your tablet, anything else that can be charged up through USB. I think like, you know, the Nintendo Switch, I think can be charged up through USB. So if you have that, you can charge up your game stuff as well. And it's just great. And there's also, a, I guess there's also a USB-C output as well. So you could theoretically charge up three things. I don't know how fast that would drain the battery, but it is 20,100 milliamp hours, which is really big. And I think that would last a very long time. So I really like this as well. And uh, so this could also go along with that too. So you could charge this up when you're on the road. And also you don't even need to use this for a piano. A, a piano. It makes a pretty good desk, desk lamp too. It, uh, it has a pretty nice appearance to it. So I genuinely like this lamp. I recommend that you guys buy it. I think it would make a really good Christmas present. My mom might be getting one, don't tell her, but I think I might be getting one for my mom because she likes it and I like it and I think it's pretty awesome. So without any further ado, let's go to the studio and check out some of the things that this light would also work on as well. We'll try it out on maybe an organ or a harpsichord or some weird thing like that and as well as a couple of other pianos. Let's do that. This, as you can see, is a Hammond B3. The one we have in Milan Recording Studios is from 1965. And as you can see, this light from New LED does a wonderful job of not only lighting up the music desk, but also the instrument as a whole. I can see all of the key, all the manuals, all of the controls, all the drawbars, the buttons, the presets, the knobs, everything from the power switch over here to the Leslie speed control way down here. It covers everything. And I'm thinking that this light actually might be a really good option for someone who is actually on location, who is doing live gigs. Because a lot of the of complaints I hear from people who do live sets is that they it's dark and they can't see what they're doing on the keyboard. Which is why I think a lot of people, one of the reasons a lot of people like the Roland RD2000 for live performances is because the knobs light up and you can see them. But regardless, this light I think would be a really good idea. I don't know if anyone really uses B3s anymore out on the road, but if you did, this would be perfect for it because not only does it make your instrument look gorgeous, but you can also see everything that's going on on the instrument. Even if it was pitch black in the rest of the room, it would still light up the instrument. In fact, I'm curious. I'm going to go turn off all the lights and see how well it lights up the instrument. I'll be right back. So this is with every single light off in the studio except this one up here. And as you can see, you can see the Hammond B3 perfectly fine. You can't see me, but I as a performer can see everything I need to see on the instrument. So yeah, I think this instrument would be really great. I mean, this uh, light would be really great for, for performing on instruments in dark locations. It does a really great job.
When most people go looking to buy a piano lamp, they're probably not looking to buy one to put on their Wurlitzer 200. But I have one here, so I decided to put it on there anyway and just see if it works. And the answer is yes, it does. Now, the Wurlitzer, as well as a another similar electric piano from the day, the Rhodes, both of those have a number of things in common, but one of the things they have in common is a curved top. As you can see, this has a slightly arched top to it, and that means because this light has a flat bottom, it does have a bit of wibble wobble to it. Now on a flat surface, it's rock solid. There's no problems at all with the stability, but on a curved surface like this, it does get kind of wobbly. So I came up with the kind of a, a bootleg solution that works for now because it's something we have here at the studio. At home, you probably wouldn't have a pair of piano mutes sitting around, but they are wedge shaped, which is the exact it's the exact thing we need for this. At home, you could probably 3D print a wedge and put it under there if you need something for this exact circumstance, or maybe you could just put some fabric under there. A lot of different solutions for that. But we have piano mutes. These are used for tuning. You put them in between the strings to isolate them, to know which one's out, and to be able to tune one specific string. So what you can do is just put one under here, and you can put the other one under uh, here. Maybe I didn't quite do that right, but if you do it right, it takes out all of the wobble and now it's really nice and secure. So this is basically just turning it into a more flat surface and it works very, very well. So why would you want this? Well, if you're if you're using a vintage Wurlitzer out on the road, out for gigs, on location, Again, a lot like this would be a really huge benefit because it might be dark on stage or you might be, maybe the main focus point of your band is the Wurlitzer, so you want it to be front and center. This would be a really great way to light it up if there's no good stage lights. So there's a lot of cool options. Also, I just think it looks pretty neat. The light itself looks cool and it makes whatever's underneath of it look really cool, especially with the warm lighting. I think I've mentioned before, but there's three different color temperatures here. There's the warm, there's a cold blue, there's the warm, then there's a mixture of the blue and the the warm. I personally like the warm one the best. I think it looks awesome. And anything you put under it looks awesome. And of course, if you have sheet music here, it's going to be lighting that up perfectly as well. So here is the Rhodes that we have here at the studio. It happens to be right around from the same era as the Whirly, and once again, it has a curved top. Now this light is actually pretty stable up here. It does wobble, but it's not really gonna be falling off. But as I said earlier, just like with the Wurlitzer, I can come in here and stick these under here, and that will almost completely solve the problem. Now it's not gonna do it at all. So again, the mutes are kind of like a last minute notice kind of um, fix to the problem. Like I said, you could 3D print something that's wedge shaped and put it under there and that would be very sleek. Or you could put some fabric under there or wood, anything would really fix that problem. So if you wanna use this on a Rhodes or a Whirly, it does work. And like with the Rhodes and like, I mean, like with the Whirly and like with the B3 that I've either showed you or will show you, um, it lights up the whole keyboard. It, the entire instrument is covered as well as the little makeshift music stand here that um, Fender has put in here. These aren't widely used as a music stand because they just barely work. But if you have some stiff music like a hardback book or some like laminated paper, they will sit in this little cred, uh, little crevice here and they will hold your sheet music and this would do a perfect job of lighting that up as well. So now let's move on to keyboards. I know that a lot of people will practice on keyboards at home. I myself do as well to keep the time off of the pianos here at Milan Recording Studios. So the question here is how do you use this piano lamp with a keyboard? Well, with the MP11, with this particular keyboard, it is pretty flat on top. So you could also set the lamp on top of the keyboard and aim it at the music. Many of you might also have thought that you could have done that with a piano, which you probably could have as well. But what I think is kind of neat is I like to have the music light behind the music so it doesn't get in the way. And that's why I was putting it behind the music desk on the pianos and many of the other instruments. And so I also bought this little uh, inexpensive table uh, from Lowe's. It's made to be sitting up against a wall and you can put like your change or your keys or a lamp or whatever on it. But this time I'm using it behind the keyboard and I'm putting the LED lamp on top of it, which I think works pretty well. It's around at the right height to be able to be aimed at the sheet music and it's covering the sheet music just perfectly well. And I think that works pretty well. So you could have this kind of up against a wall. You could have a wall outlet down there and just plug the lamp right into the wall outlet and, uh, you know, with a USB adapter. And uh, then you just have a, a lamp right there at your, uh, your, at your keyboard and it would work really good. Now, as I said, the MP11 is flat, so you could also just set the lamp on top of the keyboard. It does have a rubbery bottom, which I forgot to mention. It has a nice grippy rubbery bottom 
which shouldn't cause any scrapes or issues with the instrument, and it would also sit pretty well somewhere on the instrument. So if you wanted to do that too, if you didn't want to have a separate table for the music lamp, you could also do that as well. Now we've already seen the music light being used on the Baldwin Grand Piano, so now let's try it on a different Grand Piano. This is my sheet mirror that I use here at Milan Recording Studios in Studio B, and while many people at home would often use a lamp like this for an upright piano, which it would virtually work perfect for for every single upright piano, when it comes to grand pianos, it's a little bit of a different story. You saw that nice shelf that the Baldwin had behind the music rest, and I personally like to put the music lamp behind the music rest. You could put it on one of these shelves and have it aim the light at the music, which would work pretty good as well, but I like the look of it behind here a little bit more. So when it comes to grand pianos, there's different designs of music desks, and sometimes there isn't a convenient shelf behind the music desk. So sometimes you have to kind of build your own little thing to make a light like this work well for the piano. But before I show you guys the behind air area behind the music desk, I do want to say that this light makes the piano look absolutely gorgeous. It brings out this nice orangey red tone of the wood grain in the piano, and it looks really, really nice. So this is the design of the music desk in the back of the sheet mirror. I'm sure I talked about this when I did my full review of this piano when I first got it to the studio, but here I'm going to talk about it again because it's a little bit relevant to this video. As you can see, we have the light sitting on this shelf and it's braced on two different pieces of wood. You have this bracket here that goes along the back and then there's also this one which moves and allows you to put the music desk in different positions. So if I lift this up, I think I'll have to move the lamp first, but you'll see how we kind of had it on there. And we also, if you'll excuse these. It, we also have this bracket here as well, which is just a simple thing. It's made of three different little blocks of wood, and it's got green felt on the inside. It's very simple to make. If you wanted to make your own, just make sure to put something soft on the inside. You could use felt like this, or you could get fancy and use microfiber. Just cloth, cloth in general would work fine for that if you want to make something like that for yourself. And then you can just set the lamp right on top of there. Now, if you don't use this three-way uh, prong, the issue of it hitting the strings won't really be an issue at all. I'm just using that because it's black and it matches the light. Uh, if you didn't use one that if you use one that only had one connection at the end, you wouldn't have any problems with it getting inside the piano. But that is the way this particular piano lamp will mount to the back of the piano, and honestly, it works pretty well when you use that little uh, when you use that little stand. Just for fun, I thought I would try this light out on my Sabbath Hill and Sun harpsichord, and. As you can see, it actually does work. I'm pleasantly surprised to see that. I probably won't be using this light on the harpsichord all that much, but just for fun, I thought I would try it out. It does have a similar problem to the Schiedmar, where it likes to kind of wobble back like that, because as you can see, the back half of the, uh, the light there isn't actually being supported by anything. But it does manage to sit there, so if you have a Sabbath Hill and Sun harpsichord, this light is compatible with it. So the last thing I'm going to test out this light on in the studio is going to be the Steinway, which we use as a recording piano here at Milan Recording Studios. So you can see here from the front that it's lighting up the music desk just perfectly fine, but let me take you around back and show you the setup that we have behind here. It's a little bit similar to the setup we had for the Schiedmeyer. So here is around back behind the music desk of the Steinway, and as you can see, the light is actually sitting there. I'm using the same bracket that I was using before on the Schiedmeyer to make this work on the Steinway, because this has kind of, it's like a hybrid between the Baldwin design and the Schiedmeyer design, because it has a simple mechanism where the lid, the music desk, just lifts up and it's one piece. There's no little, like, rack with different settings. However, it doesn't have a nice shelf behind here, it only has this bar kind of like the Schiedmeyer had. So we are forced to use this thing if we want to have the light behind the music desk and have it working well, and otherwise it literally would not sit there at all unless you're using a bracket like this. Now you could improve upon this bracket too, like I showed you earlier, they're pretty simple to make. If you made it wider, it would be a lot more stable because it does have a little bit of side to side movement. If you made it wider, that would completely fix that. And if we had a bit more time, we would fix the cable and make it look a little bit nicer. But I did manage to find a black uh, mini USB cable, or micro USB, excuse me, and uh, that only has the one port on the end. And as you can see, that's a little bit more manageable than the three-way cable, which is convenient, but a little bit messy. So that, I think, is about everything that I wanted to cover featuring this light. It is an awesome product. I really, really enjoy it. So big thank you to Amy from New Vending for sending me this product. I genuinely enjoy it. I do think it's awesome. I do think that it would be really cool if there was like a separate, a second 
type of light that was basically identical to this but had a clip on it. That way there you could very easily mount it to a piano without having to build a separate mount. However, I love this one the way it is. I think it's very, very well made, especially for the price point. It's only around $40, which might sound steep, but there are much more expensive piano lamps out there that don't look quite as nice. So I think this would make a really good Christmas present for somebody, especially if they have an upright piano a Baldwin piano, or a Hammond B3, especially the Hammond B3. This thing makes those instruments look absolutely beautiful. If you have a B3, you should definitely consider getting one of these. I think it looks awesome. And it works on basically every instrument that I've tried it out on. Some of the things, like I mentioned, it works perfectly on. The Baldwin, I just slap it in the back and I'm ready to go. Other instruments like the Rhodes and the Steinway, I kind of had to make it work a little bit, but I've managed to make it work on every instrument that I have tried it out on, which I think is awesome. So I really like the light output. I like the coverage that it has because it covers, I mean, it's lighting up the whole keyboard. It's more than adequate for being a music light. It's honestly really, really great. So again, thank you very much to Amy from New Vending for sending me that product. Now, I do have a little thing to mention. She told me that apparently if you link to an Amazon product and someone clicks on the link and then leaves a review, apparently it doesn't count as a review towards the product. So what instead I will do is instead of providing links, I will put like, I guess, keywords that you can copy and paste and then and then paste into Amazon search and then you can find the products there because Amazon, Amazon seems to be really particular about like it's cap sensitive when you search because if I type the name of this thing in on low on lowercase it doesn't come up if I copy and paste a little section of the title that includes the name of it it comes up so I will include the keywords that you can copy and then paste into Amazon search to find these products and there's also a 10% off coupon that I will also leave down there so if you're interested in buying one of these you can use that coupon code and you can save 10% off I highly recommend this thing. It is an awesome product. And I also really love the power bank as well. This was kind of an added bonus as well. Um, it's really fantastic. And this adds a lot of versatility to this light because without the power bank, unless you already have a power bank, you're kind of stuck using it at home. With this power bank, you can use it on location. Like I mentioned earlier, you can, it's, I think it would be amazing for using out on stage. It does such a good job of lighting up an instrument. It's not only for the music, it's also for the instrument itself. So it would make you look cool and make the instrument look cool and you can see what you're doing when you're using this power bank so you can use it on location. Uh, it's absolutely massive. I haven't, it's, I've only got it on like half a charge and I haven't had any issues running out with it and I've been using this thing all day long. So this thing has an absolutely massive amount of power, especially when you're using this light. But of course you can also charge up your phone or your tablet or power really anything else with it, another different type of light or something. This power bank is really awesome as well. So I'll have the little keyword you can go copy and paste to find this as well in the description. Like I mentioned, that comes with a three-way cable so you can charge and discharge it with it. And powering up this um, light, it did, it did come with a very nice long, not this one, this is not the one that came with. It came with like one that was twice as long. It came with a very nice long USB, uh, micro USB cable that you can plug into the back of it and then either plug into a wall adapter like this or you could plug it directly into the power bank and use it that way. So the user using this thing is really simple. It does a great job. The build quality seems awesome. I think I'm going to get many years of enjoyment out of it. But again, the point of my whole channel is to do an honest review. I'm not going to be, you know, paid to review something, especially if I don't like it. I'm not going to be paid to say nice things about it if those things aren't true. I'm going to be saying the truth about these products, and the truth is I like this new LED. That's the name of it, N-U-L-E-D. I like this light. It's awesome. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel because I do lots of reviews of pianos, keyboards, organs, and all kinds of other neat instruments. If you like that kind of stuff, you might want to check out my channel. And if you do that, thank you very much. You might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.